I think we can agree that babies are fantastic to knit for. The projects are super fun and often very quick. So I think they're quite popular. So today's video is all about the best yarns that I've found to use for babies. Welcome back to my knitting channel. My name is Nadine and you can find me at Your Knitting Bestie on Instagram, Ravelry and here on YouTube. On this channel you can expect to find me talking about all things knitting from the perspective of someone who lives in a warmer climate um, being here in Brisbane, Australia. So in today's video we are talking about baby yarns and for me it's because I'm looking to make a baby blanket in the near future but you might be looking to make a baby garment, um, some accessories and I think it's worth noting as well that baby yarn doesn't necessarily have to be used for babies. <laughs> You might prefer to use baby yarns for yourself because you like the softer feel and because perhaps they're washable in the machine washable, I should say. Uh, that tends to make looking after these things a little bit easier as well. So what are the criteria that I've used in putting together these yarns for you? I've looked for things that are machine washable not necessarily machine dryable, I'm not too fussed on that, and that does seem to be really hard to find. I've looked for yarns which have to have a rating of over four stars on Ravelry. I've looked at the comments on Ravelry in the reviews of the yarn, I've looked at comments in the projects where people use this yarn, and I've considered your comments as well from your lovely comments on my last knit and chat video where I asked for your opinion on what the best baby yarn is. So those are the things that I've used to put together these yarns. And in today's roundup, I believe I have three wool-based yarns, one cotton, and two acrylics. Yes, that's right. So I've got six yarns in total and one honorable mention, which didn't actually make the cut, and I'll tell you why. And if you stick around until the end, I'll let you know which yarn I'm thinking of using for this project that I have in mind, a baby blanket. I'd like to quickly mention as well that there is a healthy discourse happening in the knitting community at the moment on the use of acrylic yarn. This video is not going to delve into that debate. Um, I think a lot of us are coming to our own conclusions and doing our own research on the use of fibres that we have in our stash, but many people do use acrylics and that's why I've included acrylics in this roundup, particularly for things like baby projects because those acrylic yarns do tend to be machine washable, which can be quite handy. So I think there is a place in a lot of people's collections for acrylic yarn. I guess what I'm trying to say is this is a completely judgment-free zone for what fiber you choose to use in your stash. And I should say that uh, this top that I'm wearing today is, I think, it was a while ago, but I believe this is an acrylic yarn that I picked out early in my knitting journey from Spotlight. So I'll do some investigative work and see if I can find that yarn and put it on the screen. Uh, and the pattern, it's just a simple raglan pattern. I think it was probably from the flax era. <laughs> I really went crazy with making them for a hot minute. Um, so I think that's where this is from. And so I, I really like this one. I really like how playful the fuzzy vibe is. And I originally bought this yarn because I really wanted to make my sister a fluffy cropped cardigan. And I still kind of do actually. I ended up making her a top like this, but maybe I'll make her a fluffy cardigan too. I should say also, that I have used a fair few acrylic yarns before, so I have some experience with them. My concerns have always been around peeling and around uh, the heat regulation aspect. But for something like a baby blanket, I'm not too tied up on that because the purpose of a blanket is to be warm and it's pretty easy to take off um, if it's too warm. And I think the baby that I'm knitting for is also kind of coming in our winter months where 
a warm blanket would be helpful. Okay, so I'll split this video into categories being the wools, the cotton and the acrylics at the end. So you can skip through at any time if you'd like. So for each of these yarns, I'm going to give you a bit of information at the start and then I'll um, tell you my comments on the yarn at the end, just so that we know what we're talking about. Okay, so kicking off then with the wool category. And the first yarn I have for you in this category is Drops Baby Merino. And this is 100% extra fine merino. It is a five ply or sport weight yarn and a suggested gauge of 24 stitches by 32 rows on three millimeter needles. This one comes in 50 gram bowls. It is sitting at around three pounds 50 and around $6.80 AUD. So on Ravelry, this yarn has 4.4 votes from a whopping 5,098 votes. So needless to say, pretty popular. And from the looks of the comments on my last video, I think a couple of you, or maybe many of you, have used this yarn for baby projects. And I can see why it's so popular, because the colours it comes in are not the typical baby colours, not just the white, pale blue, pink, yellow kind of deal. It's normal kind of elevated, sophisticated colors for the sophisticated baby. <laughs> or for yourself if you're using it for a project for you. So I can really see why that's popular. The only thing that's putting me off it, I think is the weight of the yarn. So at around um, the 24 stitches and 32 rows to 10 centimeters. I think it's a little bit too light for what I'm looking for. And I can see why you might like a lighter fabric in a warmer climate like here in um, Brisbane. But selfishly, I think it'll take a little bit too long to knit up. <laughs> so I'm looking for something probably around the DK weight. So if I were to take the sport weight yarn and hold it double, for example, I think it would then be a little bit too thick a fabric for what I'm looking for. It'll probably end up then at around uh, the 10 ply or worsted weight. So not quite right for me, I think. <laughs> so that's what's pulling me away from this one, but I do really love the colors that it has. Okay, so that's number one. Moving on to the second yarn then in the wool category, which is another one that might be fairly popular. It is Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino. So this one is 55% merino, 33% microfiber, 12% cashmere. Very luxurious for a baby. <laughs> so this one again is sitting at a five ply sport weight. So similar sort of comments on the gauge for my particular purposes. I think it would be really nice to have that finer gauge in a garment, but for what I'm looking for in a blanket, possibly a little bit too fine. That one is sitting at 50 grams as well. Uh, a little bit more expensive than the Drops Baby Merino at $8.99 AUD. And this one is sitting at 4.5 stars from 8,501 votes on Ravelry. So another really popular one, I think. And again, it has fabulous colors available in this yarn. In particular, I really like this sort of camel color because the person I'm knitting for has requested a neutral, but I have two gray whips at the moment. So I'm <laughs> really craving just a little bit of color. I don't know if I can bring myself to knit something in kind of cream or gray right now. So if you then look at the comments, even though it has a pretty high um, rating on Ravelry, there are some issues that are pointed out in the comments. So there are some minor splitting issues as the yarn is reasonably loosely plied. It's kind of pills, which I think is probably a common problem in a really soft yarn like baby yarns, unless they have a particular anti-pilling treatment. 
And there's also a concern with knots in the yarn, which some people find very frustrating. Personally, it doesn't bother me too much, although obviously I don't love having extra ends to weave in because I usually cut out the knot and then keep knitting um, and weave in the ends as usual. And the other comment is that this yarn has very good stitch definition, but by the same token can be a little unforgiving of errors. So for me, I don't think that will bother me too much because I'm thinking of a fairly simple stitch pattern. But if you're doing something a little bit more intricate or something that might show um, some differences in tension or things like that, that is something for you to consider. And on the peeling, there was a suggestion on in the Ravelry comments that you might consider using a smaller needle and that would help prevent the peeling. The third and final wool that in this roundup is one that Aussies are going to love. This is from our Holy Grail mill here in Australia, Bendigo Woolen Mills. And we all go wild for this yarn here. We absolutely love it. And it is, um, I believe it's Australian wool that is used to make these yarns. So the one in particular that I would be looking at for th something like a baby blanket is the Luxury 8 Ply. Uh, which has again some fairly good colors it's a very uh, adult <laughs> color palette but i don't mind that look on in baby clothing i quite like it i actually like it more than the classic pastels that you tend to see uh, but of course that's just my preference so this one is sitting at a gauge that i like a little bit more it's at that eight ply dk weight uh, gauge so the suggested uh, number of stitches is 22 stitches to 10 centimeters on about four millimeter needles. So I really like that gauge. That's one of, that's like my comfort gauge to use four millimeter needles and about that number of stitches. The fantastic thing about Bendigo Woolen Mills is that they come in these giant ball. <laughs> you can't say that. Oh. So the fabulous thing about Bendigo Woolen Mills is that the yarn comes in 200 gram balls. So you get a lot of value in there because it's also only $16 for the 200 gram ball. So if you were to kind of do the math so that the, we can compare apples to apples, given that the others are 50 grams. So if you were to do the math then, that comes out at $4 AUD for 50 grams, which is frankly incredible value. Um, particularly for the quality of the yarn, because they say that this one is a fine micron wool, so about 25 micron wool, which it says on the website, so of course they have a vested interest, but it says that they have the most luxurious pure wool yarn available in Australia, which is pretty cool. And this one is sitting at 4.6 stars from 1019 reviews. So fairly well loved on Ravelry. So I think this is definitely the best value wool in this roundup. And I really like using it because those high quantity balls means that there's less weaving in of your ends uh, when you finish the project. And I'm one of those knitters who really enjoys knitting and hates finishing. <laughs> so that is something that I really appreciate. Uh, some people say that this wool has a little bit of a rustic feel to it. I did use the 12, is it the 12 ply? Yes, the 12 ply um, luxury for my antler cardigan. And I can see what they mean with that a little bit. It does have a bit of a more rustic feel to it. But I've read all over the place that the Bendigo Woolen Mills really softens up a lot if you wash it thoroughly. And to be honest, I don't know if I, when I blocked it, I don't know if I had any sort of detergent or wool wash or anything in there. So possibly if I'd done that, it would have softened up even more. But this is uh, the yarn which is suggested by a lot of people for baby projects. So on that basis, I have to assume that it would be fine for, um, you know, soft enough to use with the baby skin. So that is why it has made the list. And it's definitely a high contender for me. 
I do mention this because I know that there are some fabulous people watching from outside of Australia. So I was hesitant, a little bit hesitant to put it in this video because it might not be accessible to you, but they do ship internationally. So, and the, the low price point combined with the fact that the Aussie dollar isn't winning any fights at the moment <laughs> with many other currencies, uh, you might still consider it because even with the, I assume, higher shipping costs, it might still be an economical option for you. So not only does this one have the lowest cost per 50 grams, but this is also the highest rated wool in this roundup. So you can see why us Aussies absolutely love Bendigo Woolen Mills. Okay, so then moving along to the next category, which is the cotton yarn that I've picked out. And I did see some people mention that they like using cotton in their baby blankets on the comments on my last video. And I can understand why, particularly in Australia's climate, uh, in the warmer parts for sure, because cotton at that kind of lower gauge where it's a finer fabric is a nice breathable option. And it might mean that um, you can get more use of it in this climate. Or if you're knitting overseas, you might opt to use something like a plant fibre um, where the baby is being born in your warmer months. Because of course the baby blanket maybe might be higher use when they're quite small. So maybe that's the season that makes sense for this project and the yarn that makes sense for that season. So the one I've picked out is um, King Cole Cotton Soft DK, which is 100% cotton. And this one is, as the name suggests, an 8-ply or DK yarn. So the suggested gauge is sitting at 22 stitches and 28 rows on 4mm needles. And this one is 100 grams per ball. So that's coming out at £4.40 or about $8.50 AUD. So in 50 gram terms, uh, you're sitting at around $4.25ish. AUD, which is fairly reasonable, I think. And this one is another one which is fairly highly rated. So 4.6 stars from a lower amount of votes, 342. It is worth noting though that this one, the 4.6 rating, means that this is tied with the Bendigo Woolen Mills for the highest rated yarn in this roundup. So it is one to consider. This one does have 21 colours, so a good range there as well. It does have some comments, uh, which I think you'd probably expect for a cotton yarn. So there's a comment that it has a bit of a dry hand feel. So the comment said you might perhaps have some hand cream nearby if you're using this yarn, which is a great suggestion. It sheds, um, although there was a comment that said they sh it shed during knitting, but not after washing. So that might be a point in its favour. And the usual issues with a cotton yarn, so the fact that it might stretch after wear. So that's something to consider for a high use garment perhaps. Although, I mean, children grow pretty quick, I'm led to believe. So <laughs> maybe it wouldn't be worn enough that the stretching would become an issue. But for a blanket, I think that's probably okay because if it stretches out, we don't mind too much, it's just a slightly bigger blanket. So that is something to think about as well if you're knitting for a summer baby. I'll do my honourable mention here. So I saw in the comments that a lot of people suggested using a bamboo combination or just a bamboo yarn. And I looked up what I could find um, in that category. So what jumped out to me was the Snuggly Baby Bamboo DK, which is 80% bamboo, 20% wool. And that's 50 grams sitting at $9.70 AUD. So I thought originally that that might be a good option because I really liked having the little bit of wool in there because bamboo can be quite a slippery fiber, but wool has some tooth to it. 
So it could be that the kind of uh, raw nature of the wool gives the bamboo some more gripping power and you have a little bit more control when you're knitting. But when I looked into a little bit further, so this one had uh, 4.3 stars on Ravelry from 3,079 votes. So on the lower side, if not, actually it is the lowest rated yarn in this roundup, which is why it didn't make it in to the official, <laughs> the official roundup. So I excluded this one because of the many comments saying that it doesn't wash well. It felts and it sheds a lot, and also that there were a heap of knots throughout the knitting. S um, sorry, a lot of knots throughout the yarn. So that is why I decided not to include it in this official roundup. But I mention it because I'd love to hear your suggestions on any bamboo or bamboo combination yarns that you use for babies. Okay, so finally then on to the manufactured fibers or acrylic yarns. So I've got two for you, and frankly, they both look pretty good. Um, so the first one is uh, Paint Box Yarns Baby DK. And that one is 55% acrylic, 45% nylon. So a little bit of strength in it as well. It's sitting at eight ply DK weight, 22 stitches to 30 rows on four millimeter needles. Again, 50 gram ball. $7.25 AUD and the votes is 4.5 from 88 votes but 4.7 from 104 votes on the Lovecrafts website. So that's interesting and of course you find that it depends on where you look things are rated slightly differently and uh, given that Lovecrafts is where you buy <laughs> this yarn perhaps that explains why the votes are a little bit higher. So uh, I thought I'd include some information on the shipping for people who are in Australia or New Zealand. So the shipping is between uh, $14.50 to $45, depending on how much you spend. And it's expected to be delivered within 7 to 14 working days, which isn't too bad, but also isn't the best. <laughs> but they do give you a tracking number as well. And this one again comes in 24 colours. So I think that's one of the pros of the paint box yarns. They have, as the name suggests, a whole bunch of colors to consider. So if you're doing a multicolored project for your blanket or for your garment, you might consider using this one for that range of colors, all of which from memory are nice and bright. So that's the first acrylic yarn. And the second one is Fiddlesticks Superb 8 which is 100% anti-pilling acrylic. So if you're someone who is concerned with the pilling aspect, maybe because you want the, the item that you're making to be a high rotation or high use object, then you might consider this yarn for that anti-pilling property. So this one is again an eight ply or DK weight yarn. The suggested gauge is 22 stitches to 30 rows on four millimeter needles and it is 100 grams sitting at $6.80 AUD. So in 50 gram terms, you're looking at $3.40. So exceptionally affordable there. And on Ravelry, this one is again, fairly highly rated, although a lower number of votes. So 4.5 stars from 90 votes. And I think this one, I'll have to go back and double check, but I think this one takes the crown for the most economical yarn. So the reason I'm particularly interested in this yarn is because I saw a comment from someone who routinely leaves comments on my videos. So hello, you know who you are. Um, there was a comment that this particular yarn has withstood some rigorous washing from the recipient. So that is excellent to hear because I think that's a possibility. That's why I've chosen yarns for this roundup, which can withstand being machine washed. And to hear that it holds up to rigorous machine washing is very comforting to me. So I'm very interested in this particular yarn. 
The comments on Ravelry say it holds up well to frogging with no stretching or bagging, which is fantastic for an acrylic yarn. And again, it has a fabulous color selection. So a lot of options to choose uh, based on the personality of your recipient. Okay, so now for the hard part, figuring out which yarn I'd like to buy to use in this baby blanket. So I actually just took another five, 10 minutes off screen to go through the options again and look at the colors again, because I'm struggling to make up my mind for sure. Um, oh. Look, the Bendigo Woolen Mills is always up there on my list. And I'm just, I'm trying to drag myself away from it because I think it would be good to try some other yarns as well, instead of always going to my emotional support <laughs> mill. Uh, so I think I should try something else. I'm tempted by the King Cole Cotton Soft as well, um, particularly given that high rating that it has, the 4.6 stars, and how economical it is as well. But the thing is, I just don't love knitting with cotton, um, which is a shame for me here, but it is what it is. It tends to be a little bit harder on the hands, I find, because the yarn lacks that elasticity. So I think, I think I'm going to go with the Fiddlestick Superb 8, which is one of the acrylic yarns. And I really like that it is anti-pilling because I hope that this will be a really high use item. And I saw a comment from someone saying that one of their blankets had turned into the everyday blanket, which I think is just the highest compliment because I believe I understand that children are quite fickle creatures. <laughs> so if they're using your project all the time, it must be quite exceptional indeed. And I hope that mine gets there. So the real reason that I'm going for this yarn is the fact that someone had said that it held up really well to significant washing. That is the factor that I think is cinching the deal for me. And I also really like the colors that they have available. So the yarn store, which is an Australian store, meaning maybe I would save on postage, has a whole bunch of colors available, $6.80 a bowl. But the one that I really like, which is caramel, is out of stock at the moment. So I might have a bit of a Google around to see if I can find that particular color from somewhere else, because I think that fits the bill of being a neutral color as requested by the parent. And it also has a little bit, like it's a bit of a color as well. It's more exciting than the cream or the gray, in my opinion just my opinion of course so i think that's the one i'm going to go for and i'm quite excited to give it a try so thank you to the people who recommended that particular yarn in the comments okay so that brings me to the end of this video i really hope you've enjoyed it i enjoyed looking at all of the different options and it was actually really hard to whittle down my list um, so i had to be really selective in terms of whether it hit, you know, a high enough rating on Ravelry, if it was machi machine washable. So for example, another great suggestion people had was the cotton from, Estra um, from Bendigo Woolen Mills, which is of course wonderful as well, but that one is hand wash only. So unfortunately it was excluded from this video. So yeah, it was quite difficult to find, uh, just to limit it to a small number of yarns. So I'd be really interested to hear if you have other options that you like using. Um, and if you're someone who is looking for a baby yarn to use, then I'd really encourage you to read the comments both on this video and on my last knit and chat uh, where people left comments on the same sort of topic. Uh, because I firmly believe that a knitter's best resource is other knitters. And there are some fabulous knitters who watch this video, if I do say so myself. So thank you very much if you're one of those fabulous knitters who watches my videos. You are so appreciated. Um, and if you liked this video or found it helpful, it would be wonderful if you would hit like. I'm led to believe that helps the video go places. <laughs> and if you haven't already subscribed, it would be terrific if you would consider subscribing 
so that you can see videos from me in the future. So thanks again for watching and I'm really looking forward to talking to you in the next video.